Hey everyone, what is good and going on with you guys? I hope you all are doing well. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. So fall is upon us and it's my favorite time of year. So those wonderful autumn colors of reds, browns, yellows, and those warm golden tones will be popping up everywhere. And also that means horror marathon movies. And one of my favorite horror movies is Candyman. And one of my favorite special effects artists is Anthony Cozart. Him and his team worked on this last Candyman movie. So those are the reasons that inspired this honeycomb look. And I hope you enjoy it. So let's just go ahead and get into the footage. Starting off, I want to protect my eye, leaving a little bit of space between my eye and the prosthetic so that it will not rub up against it and be irritating and it will allow me to open my eye up underneath the prosthetic. So I do this with aluminum foil and scotch tape. I'll be making this sculpt using a latex paste by placing about a half a cup of liquid latex into a bowl and sifting my flour. And I start to stir from the inside out, making sure that all the wet and the dry ingredients are incorporated. And if it gets too stiff, or if it's still not incorporated, just continue to add liquid latex until you get a texture that's stiff enough to sculpt, but does not fall off your tool. Or in this case, I'm using a spoon. I pour a small amount of liquid latex into a plate, and this is to use for my tools that I'll be using to smooth down this design. I'm taking a healthy portion of that paste to get that onto my face cast and I begin to move it around into the areas that I want this design to be. Now I'll just dip my finger into the liquid latex to smooth this out. I tend to use my fingers more than I do a tool for this process because it allows me to feel where I need to build it up and it leaves it a little bit more smoother in its design. So I get those edges down thin and I build up the brow bone and I sink into the eye socket and build up over the cheek area. I think this adds a little bit more dimension to the look, but that's up to you and that's a preference. But I get that smoothed out and make sure my design is in the places that I need it to be. Now moving on, I've let my face cast dry for about an hour and a half and I take an aloe wrench and the size that I want it to be, I want it to transfer well onto the screen and I didn't want to have to zoom in to see this honeycomb look. So this is the size that I chose for it to be. And I'll take my tool and I'll dip it into latex. That way it, it gives up freely and just go through the entire design, making sure that everything's universal and in the areas that I need it to be. And I dip into the eye socket a little bit deeper with the tool. It gives it a little bit more dimension. It is now time to remove my sculpt from my face cast and taking flour and a brush I go over the outside and I go and move that up underneath the prosthetic letting it release as the flowers be being moved up underneath it.
Once I get this removed, I be sure to turn that around and make sure I remove the spacer up underneath it. It is time to paint the sculpt and today I'm using my Skin Illustrator FFX palette. This is the Blood and the Bruise Toned and I'm also using the Skin Illustrator on the set skin palette to warm it up. Now these are alcohol based activated paints and you're going to need 99% alcohol to in order to activate these paints. And the reason why I prefer to use alcohol based paints is because it's, it allows you to build up color and it's a little bit more forgiving if you put it into an area that you don't like and it's on a non-porous surface. You can use alcohol and a towel to remove some of that and I just like this process and it adds a little bit more depth and dimension in the color. Now taking the yellow from the FX palette. I go all over making sure I get this color into the indentions into the honeycomb all the way out to the edges and I carry this all the way over to the other side of the prosthetic that I sculpted these palettes are pricey the FX palette is $80 the skin palette is $50 and I picked mine up during a Cyber Monday sale around Christmas time to save me a little bit of money there are other brands out there that are a bit cheaper and this is just what I prefer I've been using this palette for about two years and I think it was worth the money Picking a warm tone on the skin palette and with the same brush I go in all over the sculpt um, deepening up and making this a little bit warmer. Using my alcohol to activate a deeper tone in this palette, I carry that throughout the piece and I continue to layer this until I get the look that I want. Using that same color, I go in with a small brush and I begin to deepen up some of this honeycomb by placing it into the areas that are deeper that I use my tool with. And I just think this adds dimension and I just randomly place colors throughout because the honeycomb is not universal in color. There are some darker cells and some lighter cells. So I took this in consideration when I did this paint. Here is the final paint job and to secure this paint job I take a can of hairspray and I just give it one small coat. Now moving on to sculpt the bees. I get my water on and I bring it to a boil of 150 degrees. I will be sculpting with polymer plastics today and I use polyplastics. Taking about half a cup of my polymer plastic, I pour my water over it and you'll see that those beads go from white to translucent. Also, I use a candy thermometer to make sure that my temperature is at least 150 degrees. If it's hotter, I don't want to put my hands in there, but right now this temperature is at 150 degrees and I'm used to working with this. Just be sure that you're comfortable with the temperature and that you don't burn yourself. I pull a small amount of plastic each at a time for each bee that I want. By doing that I roll it up into a small ball and I take my thumbnail and just make sections of the bee. So there's a segment for the head and the rest of the body and I also go ahead and sculpt the stinger out 
during this process and if you get to working with this and you see that the plastic begins to cool off all you need to do is uh, take it and dip that back into the water it will soften up to the point where you can uh, remold and continue to work with it but it's okay if you actually warm up more beads than what you need because once it dries and it goes back to white you can store it and reuse it And here are the bees before paint and today I'm using a black spray paint to paint the bodies before I add the stripes of yellow. It is time to paint the stripes on these bees. I picked out two different colors. These are acrylic paints and I'm using several different brushes to get various looks and you can find these at most craft stores. I got mine at Walmart and they run about 50 cents a piece. After mixing some colors and playing around, I'm going back and forth with several different brushes to create different styles of stripes and colors because not everything is universal and so I thought it would give more character to these bees. It is time to make some wings and I just took a plastic paper bag and I cut two wings and I super glued them on to each bee. So it is application day which means hair, makeup, a wardrobe and sculpt. And for this eye look I am using a shadow wing look and I achieve that look by keeping it crisp and putting down a piece of scotch tape on the outer corner of the eye and making sure that it goes up past the tail of the brow. Now here I used a concealer and I placed that down and I made sure to set that with powder and this is going to make those yellows show up a little bit more vibrant. I am using several different ColourPop palettes and I will link those in the description below. And I also went and I studied on how to make a beehive. Um, I did not know how to do this so I had to use a, a couple of tutorials and I found the easiest one that worked for me and I'll also link that in the description below. I just thought it was kind of cute to carry the whole bee beehive theme from the hair all the way down to the neck. And so I placed that yellow into the transition shade and I began to warm that up with some deeper yellows and browns into the crease. And then I take a darker brown and I go along the outer V halfway and I pick a shimmer and I put that down over the lid and I tend to use the finger for the shimmer because it's more vibrant and it packs uh, more color into that area. Taking a brighter yellow, I highlight that brow bone up under the eyebrow. I shaped my eyebrows down and secured those with a brow gel. Once that eyeshadow is in place on the top and I like the look, I remove the tape and I get my foundation and a blender sponge and I go through and I put my foundation down and I layer this all the way over to the other side of the face. And 
it's time to bring some warmth back into this uh, look so I take a contour palette and I warm up my face by going over and contouring around the forehead carving out the cheeks and placing down a contour over my nose and up under my lips and I take a highlighter from that palette and I continue to carve out the cheek nose and forehead area now I applied an eyelash off camera I used an Ardell eyelash just to make this uh, look pop a little bit more and I take my browns and yellows and in order to make the eye pop even more and be bigger I carry that color down from the side of the wing up under the eyelid now I like to pop a shimmer or a lighter color in the inner corner of the eye and this just makes your eyes a bit more vibrant and I do this with any look everyday makeup look uh, this is the technique that I use and taking a a mustard yellow and it comes from the raw Christie beauty color pop line uh, it's a gel liner and I place that into the bottom waterline and I add a coat of mascara before I put on my eyelash now I want this look to be glowy and dewy so I'm using the ColourPop Cheek Dew and I place that down and I highlight more areas and give it more of a glow up under the eye and I lock it down with some setting powder. Now it is time to put the prosthetic on and first I take a coat of Vaseline and I protect my natural hairline. I also rub this over the eyebrow and a small coating over the eyelash. Now guys, this is where I had an issue. I had been looking at this prosthetic directly at it to where the right side of my eye was free and the prosthetic was on the other side, but I forgot to mirror that when I put my makeup on. So I put my makeup on on the wrong side and you see the discovery. Oh uh, well, it happens. So it wasn't too bad. I quickly went off camera. I did the eye lick on the other side and it gave me an opportunity to make that wing a little bit bigger so it worked out in the end. And what I'm doing here is I'm laying a thin coat of liquid latex for my adhesive and I'm putting that on and securing all the edges into place. Making sure all those edges are secure before I let go of the piece, I take the other side and I put down some latex, let it get tacky, and I put that down and I get all of those edges secured. It is time to place the bees into this look and I take a super glue and I place them randomly on the honeycomb and I also glue a bee onto the neck and onto the headband because I wanted this to look flowy in its design going from the neck all the way up to the top and off camera I place the bees onto the headband as well as placing sequins into the hair I just think it gave it a little bit more drama now on the neck I placed a small layer of liquid latex and I begin to take loose glitter and pack that down onto the design and right in the middle of that design is where I place that bead. To make this look cohesive because I am carrying it down into the neck, I place a little bit of color into that area and I also pop some highlight and shimmer onto the collarbone. So it is time for the honey and today I'll be making my honey out of hair gel and yellow food coloring. I put about three drops in and I got the color that I thought was really good for this look and on a small brush I take that and I move it into the deeper cells and I place it randomly throughout the look um, dripping it in certain areas and I really do love the last part of last looks uh, it's just, I think it makes it the whole design come together so have fun place it wherever you like
here is the final look i hope you all enjoyed hanging out with me today i hope that this tutorial you found useful in tips and techniques whether you're looking to do some simple sculpts in a latex paste or work with polymer plastic if you are tag me in those looks and let me know i would love to see what you guys come up with in this fall also your favorite time of year please let me know why in the comments below and leave your questions also are you a horror movie fan did you enjoy the candy man movies if so let me know also who is your favorite special effects artist i would really like to know but thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me and i'll see you guys in the next video bye